Yeah, yeah, hi, sir. Yeah, yes. hello. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, just now, Vijay Sinkar sir also joined. Uh, yeah, you also joined, sir. This is Magesh, is it? Yes, sir. Hi, sir. English. Yeah. Hi. How are you? Hi. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Atul, sir, are you, uh, have you joined? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, Atul. I can hear Atul. Yeah, All yeah. set. Yeah, yeah sir. Okay. yes, sir. Perfect. <laughs> so, Mahesh, uh, what we will have to do is that uh, once we go live, you will have to uh, record this. Right now, the recording is not required. Record it once we go live. Sure, sure, sir. Yeah. Okay, you can pause the recording or you can even disconnect it. Uh, once we go live, uh, you have to be a one-year internship. And I was posted at Gandhi Medical College, which you probably would have been reading in the papers about. So Gandhi Medical College is the destined one uh, to for the COVID uh, treatment, diagnosis treatment as such. It's a government institute. I was posted there. And uh, that was the time when swine flu uh, pandemic was on. So I was immediately posted into the emergency ward of swine flu. And I ended up uh, being there for about eight weeks and handling uh, patients in and out. And I, when I say the patients are really critically uh, ill ones. So having gone through that myself, um, when I heard the news about COVID first, I kind of was in this denial that, oh, this is not going to be that dangerous. I've seen it very at very close quarters, so it's not that scary as uh, is it, it, and it is blown out of proportion in the newspapers. That is what was my personal uh, take on it. But then when the March came in and the numbers started uh, moving up the ladder and then we hear of our uh, prime minister coming and announcing the lockdown uh, in India for a few weeks, then it started striking that, okay, should so not compare the two uh, for more than one reason. Uh, it is something we actually need to be very, very careful about and take it more seriously. So immediately uh, we uh, you know, made sure we closed our residential system. Um, you know, it was a peak time of students preparing for their boards. Many of them were giving their boards. They were uh, at the verge of finishing their JE and NEET uh, entrance examination, moving on to the next classes and so on and henceforth. But we had to shut our systems. Some of the employees were, um, you know, staff were, uh, have come from different states. So we instructed them to go back to their hometowns for the safety sake. So safety, health was the first priority we have given. We have closed our central office uh, as well. And then we kind of debated for um, just a couple of days uh, within our core members, our senior staff members, as to whether we should immediately react to the situation, whether we should immediately adopt and uh, kind of make sure the learn, teaching and learning continues, or should we just wait, wait it out organically wait for government itself to give instruction as to how to go about it, uh, let the policies come in and then get started. Uh, so that was a confusion which was there. But then uh, we strongly believe that uh, necessity um, is the reason for invention, but it also should be the reason for adoption also. So we have been um, running digital platforms for the last few years. In fact, uh, for the last five years, we have uh, given out the digital book to most of our students. At the same time, we came up with a digital online testing platform in the last three years. Uh, but the only students who have used it the most, about 95,000 of them, have been students who were trying to attempt the exam in the next two years because the exams, the need, uh, not, not the need, the JE exam went online about two years back. So even if you have um, a very good ideas, very futuristic idea, there has to be a need. Now is the need to go for an online uh, classroom to kind of help teachers adopt to this mechanism, help parents adopt to this mechanism, help students adopt to this mechanism. If we let this time pass, precious time pass, they will still take it forward, but it might take more time for us. So we took a strong decision. Um, yes, uh, definitely there was some resistance, but we took a strong decision to immediately adopt. We started or we tried, we picked the easiest uh, platform 
uh, when I say easiest platform, the easier one to navigate Zoom. And uh, we have made sure that uh, as the schools were the, at the verge of closing, we gave away the smartphones and if need be uh, the net connectivity for those teachers who do not have it uh, to them and then sent them home and uh, um, uh, uh, took the Zoom platform, gave away the access to the uh, students of ours, both high, uh, higher sessions as well as the primary sections and then planned a schedule which is more adoptable to the online mechanism rather than a offline because in the offline you have the school running for the entire day but here we know that the attention span is limited so we kind of condense the curriculum which is uh, which is more uh, can be run more easily online gave it to them and then made sure that the class it's not just about conducting classes but about even taking feedback on how these classes are being conducted, how the students feel, whether they are able to grasp what's going on, is there any problem with at the receiving end, and then kept making changes as and when required. So that has been the whole journey of starting, kind of uh, trying to anticipate the severity of the situation to taking a strong call on, uh, yes, it is now that we need to do it, not later and then creating the necessary infrastructure the, and setting the mindset of teachers uh, to the receiving end and then closing the loop by taking the feedback from the students even from the teachers as well and accordingly making the necessary changes in the IT infrastructure as well as the R&D. So that's been the journey so far. Um, Atul, shall we hear yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, ma'am, uh, it doesn't, uh, it, it might be much more complex than what it sounds. You know, you mentioned that one of the most easiest platform Zoom, but uh, the background behind that was uh, far more difficult to achieve uh, than, you know, just the interface. Uh, moving to our next panelist, uh, 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 with us, we have uh, Dr. Podar, who has been working in the field of men mental health since 1999. Uh, she started Mind Over Image Consulting in 2001 with a keynote, uh, it's not a makeover, it's a mind over. Uh, Dr. Podar is uh, the managing trustee of Podar Foundation and has leveraged her passion in mental health and well-being to help countless people in raising awareness with regards to mental health and creating, uh, preventing uh, mental child-centered community-focused, adult-focused community, photo adult adult focus healthcare programs for the nation. Uh, she has also won uh, various accolades uh, in her field. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Thank you to participate and come and give your time to us. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here and lovely to have all of you here. And I've already learned so much from you, Sundara. I'm looking forward to the rest of the conversations going um, from here. Now, um, a couple of things that I'll start with is uh, because I primarily look at the psychosocial impact of, uh, of the environment on uh, not only students, but the entire ecosystem, the gatekeepers of, of the system. Um, what I feel is... Uh, of course, what we're all doing is kind of uh, trying to repair the system. We haven't created a system for this, you know, so we're, we're taking uh, what we have, um, manifesting that in a way that can be acceptable and adoptable, like we're saying, even with Zoom, etc. But while we keep talking about this, and it's great, 91% of students are at home, uh, that's about, I think, 1.6 billion uh, learners we have currently, uh, with 1.6 billion learners, um, a vast majority of those learners have no access to the internet. Um, there's a lot of countries that are using the radio system somehow and trying to make sure that at least the basic human rights are taken care of um, in the sense of uh, right to education. Uh, but apart from that, uh, there, you know, I, I know I deal with a lot of people because I work in the foundation and the foundation deals with a lot of marginalized people. Um, we want to make sure that they also receive uh, the support 
and are able, of course, to um, grow themselves, to be able to give uh, their best in these times as well. Um, and that has been really difficult because, a, like I said, no access to the internet. Also, their parents are not uh, educated enough to help them. Um, there's very little support uh, externally um, as well as internally. And I, and, I, and I think when we're looking at India rising, India shining, we cannot forget the population. Uh, so when we're really looking at this you know, really small structure of people, of course, we, you know, the elite schools who are funded, we're not talking about the under-resourced and underfunded, but the funded people is what we're talking about. I want to I want to make sure that we know and recognize that we're only talking about a certain proportion of people, um, whereas the rest who is India is not getting the support that it needs. And I think that it's very important for us to look at what can we do uh, for them as well uh, going forward in this whole uh, in this pandemic because things are not going to change uh, anytime soon. We may have the lockdown uh, finished, but I think it's here to say the system is here to stay. The system that we're going to build is here to stay. A lot of money, we've seen a lot of money going into ed tech. And if you're in ed tech, you know, you've been in the right business because this is really the time to, uh, to uh, develop uh, for this community and, and to develop for your, your own business for what really is going forward. And I think a virtual business or the, or the business of virtual education is really hampering uh, the psychosocial, emotional growth and development of the student. Because in any psychological study, we know that this is the time where they develop that interpersonal skill, where they develop uh, their sense of self, where they de develop that maturity to be able to deal with each other and with others, uh, elder, you know, younger, and they don't have that access anymore. That access is taken away. I, I see my kids, I have three kids and they're all like on these, uh, they go to the American school. So obviously they're you know, really well funded and uh, have a robust program. In fact, that program at the American school in Bombay has been adopted by a lot of the CDSE schools as well. Um, but I see what's happening. There's very little interaction uh, of students with each other. They might have, or would, I mean, in fact, it's something that I picked up with them saying, you know, how do I bridge these gaps? Because I can see that in one year, there's going to be so much uh, re resistance, A, from my child to go back to the norm, and, and B, from my child to even recognize the norm. And C, I think for the, for the, for the, uh, for the children to be interacting with each other uh, on a platform that is a teamwork and team building, because that's what we're focused on in most schools. How are we going to create that? And how are we going to make sure that that remains and is a part of their functionality? Because we're all talking about collaboration. Nothing going forward in education is going to be in rote learning. It's hardly uh, relevant in these days. I mean, even look at what's happening now. None of the practices that were adopted as a system really work. And so now we're creating. So building that creativity on an individual scale is not possible, even from a psychological point of view. So what we're talking about is how do we bridge that gap? How do we make sure that there is interaction, there is capability of growth, there is capability of innovation, given the fact that you are still isolated. And even when you're not isolated and on a Zoom call where they're say like we were 500 people on this call, but maybe we have like 200 people on a regular classroom call where maybe classrooms are interacting with each other. How do we make sure it's deep and impactful? What are the parameters that we're building? What are the SOPs that we are creating for that? I think all these things start to, um, uh, will need to be enhanced to be able to start uh, a discussion on this. And again, recognize that even people in, in school from a personal point of view, they're talking about, listen, my school is too expensive for this, for an online education system. It, it isn't relevant for me to pay the amount I was paying. And, and, and what are you giving me in return? What about A, B, C, D factors? And if you're a thinking person, you already realize that um, the community that is so important in education is not available at this point. You know, so that's really what I'm, 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 I'm working with and working on and trying to embrace and, and bring to the platform when we're talking about let's, re let's reinvent and innovate even the solutions that we have to now specifically understand it's not a hybrid model, but maybe the model going forward. Because if it's a hybrid model, we already have the, 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 the sort of gears in place. But if it's not a hybrid model, we really have to create better solutions for what we have. I, I think uh, that's quite insightful and, uh, you know, our education system, ma'am, has been around for almost, uh, you know, the British time and, and probably this is uh, 
the pandemic is is a time when probably we will change uh, some bits of it if not everything especially at the k12 level and uh, one point which you uh, you know made which was very relevant is that in the schools uh, kids do come to collaborate to to study together and and the times ahead are for collaborative and for that i think uh, we have uh, vidya shankar vidya shankar has been in the field of uh, life skill training for um, kids as well as their parents and uh, uh, with with only success as his brand and he's been one of the best seller authors for various books in this uh, segment uh, vidya shankar over to you if you could throw some light as to you know con- coming to the new normal how do you see kids really doing the relevant life skill trainings and how do you see they collaborating and working together thanks dr and it's really wonderful uh, to have the leaders from the group which is redefining education in india uh, dr sindura ma'am uh, dr prakriti bodar ma'am right and if you go ahead uh, check it it's really wonderful to have you on this forum ma'am because we'll be hearing from you what what is the real thing which is happening and uh, if you go ahead uh, i have this opportunity to address teachers parents almost every day uh, uh, over these uh, platforms uh, for the past 20 25 days if we ask one of the biggest challenge what people go through today is uncertainty right uncertainty if you to take in the scale of 1 to 100 what people are experiencing is, is predominantly close to 100 which we have never experienced in our lifetime if you go ahead ask see ask your parents right have they seen something like this no they have not seen you go and ask your grandparents whether they have experienced something like this not exactly because just uh, sundra ma'am was explaining may, maybe when she was a medical doctor she thought maybe sars experience kind of thing what she has seen because good number of us thought that was that was extreme but when you see a pandemic almost none of us who is alive today has seen something closer so this moment in human life is going to redefine everything whatever we thought was was going to be the way of life way of living maybe with respect to way we live or connect with our kids at home or way school connects with with children way the school connects with teachers <laughs> is completely changed i mean it's it's not changing it's it's past it's all changed now the biggest question what we have is this what is that new normal because if you check in in a, in an environment of school there are multiple stakeholders right from government has a role to play in country like india right and then if you go ahead check the owners owners have are looking for solutions because if uh, definitely as we move forward we'll be looking forward from uh, dr sindura ma'am about the possible solutions possible thoughts for owners because i'm sure a lot of owners are uh, connected in this forum right now right owners of school because the key is this the school is not prepared for this right till yesterday there there was a teacher who was asking me in the last session i was doing a session for about 100 plus teachers few days back one of the teachers were asking me this question till few days few months back we were telling each and every child don't spend time on mobile phones don't watch uh, say do anything on your computer spend very little time today the same teacher must have to get on and say do this homework listen to me my child is spending almost 5 to 6 hours watching the screen right and there are children who are asking me typically like 6th standard 7th standard kids right who are asking the teacher teacher you told me this in the when i was in school now you are asking me to uh, spend so much of time on the system so that the teacher is little going through that change right because it, it is a forced change on us i think this was also highlighted by dr prakriti ma'am so if you go ahead check at this point of time what we are experiencing maybe by chance if this has not happened we should have taken about 5 to 10 years to experience this change right maybe at least 5 years to experience this change in education not only education today corporates are 
thinking of doing most of the things online. So there is a big question, why we need to travel to meet? So the new normal is setting up. So set of questions also, I'm thinking aloud, what I would like to ask is this, how prepared Indian schools are? Because if we check one of the very important, important uh, understanding about mobile penetration or internet penetration in India is about, see, as on 2018 is about 20, 27 percentage is a population who can actually access some smartphone or a smart device and come online and assume it is for learning kind of thing. It's only that percentage of people, right? So there are multiple challenges which is there in front of the educators. One, the children have to get used to it, right? And number two, parents have this fear. The fear is this. Say, I'm not sure whether my child is attending class or doing something else. Because kids are more smart than parents. Right? I mean, they, they can look at the screen, they can open multiple screens and navigate faster than whatever parents can think. That is the second challenge. And third one is this, teachers face challenges because teachers are one, technology, they are not trained yet completely. And number two, I've come up, I came across a principal who was, who was telling me, uh, so there was a teacher who has to step out of her house with a phone for getting a mobile signal and over that she need to teach, right? That is, that is one typical challenge. And apart from it, there is another teacher who is having a very small child. Normally what happens is she leaves the child in the nearby, uh, say a play school kind of thing and then goes to the school. Now she has to typically manage the child and then also deliver a class. So the child makes noises during the class. So there are parents or, or complain, oh, it's, it's disturbing kind of thing. Then the principal has to get on to explain. So what we are going through is this big change is may stay for a much longer time than whatever we think. So how we have to gear up for it, how we should be able to handle this, this sudden change. It's, it's, a, it's a shock, right? It's, it's a shock for all of us. So we are stay put at home, which we have never experienced in our lifetime. Right. And uh, so how the teaching environment must have to change, how to address these typical challenges, maybe more specific to uh, Indian schools, right? More specific to teachers in India. Uh, there are a lot of social challenges. Many teachers or many students don't have that environment at home where they are able to spend that time uh, uh, getting connected, right? There is a lot of disturbance at home. So learning is, is affected. It's not like a uh, complete time between the teacher and the child. And apart from it, the last one, which, which I would like to highlight is teaching is a profession which is driven by passion, right? If you ask any teacher, I have not come across a good teacher who don't like children. Every good teacher loves children. Right? They want to spend time with children. They want to be with them. That's what the fun is all about. Right now, I am hearing from teachers. If I can't meet them in person, right? I mean, it's it becomes like one more. I mean, it's 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 tough for me. Right? I want to be with the kids. So many teachers long for a day when the schools will be open and the kids will will be able to walk in back into the school safely. Right? So this is the environment we are in right now. So all the educators who are connected, I'm sure there are teachers, there are principals, there are uh, school owners who are connected to this forum. So they are all having these questions in their mind. So how to handle this challenge? How to open up, transform their school for this new normal, right? That's, that's something what each and everyone is looking forward, doing their best to uh, say, come up with a solution. Thank you, Vidya Shankar. Thank you. Uh, we'll move now, uh, panelists, to the question and answer uh, questions that are coming from all the educators. Uh, in fact, quite a few are uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, we have a question uh, they want to uh, from a from a teacher based out of Madurai, Tamil Nadu. She's saying, uh, "How to make students and parents understand online will be future learning, and how they can become." self-responsible, how we can make 
junior children uh, which is very important uh, uh, you know junior children parents uh, to be more responsive to support their child at home in online classes uh, uh, add on to this is um, that um, how to take care of biology diagrams or some sort of practical learning to happen um, you know on the online um, what i would recommend our panelists is that if sindhu ma'am you can take on the academic side uh, and you know to add on to that uh, if uh, dr podar you could uh, put in uh, your thoughts as to you know if a child has to constantly look at the screen what could be the impact on that and how to space it out uh, if if that's the way you know you all both could answer the questions back to back uh, it will be very helpful sindhu ma'am so yeah atul uh, well as uh, i know vidya shankar has been the, you know rightly pointing out um, you know adoption by a teacher um, and of course based on the questions that have come up as well by the parent and by the student is the most important at this time i would like to answer for all the three so it will be a, probably a little extensive one but it will be helpful for all the members attending the session today so um, the problem the main problem with covid is as uh, vidya shankar has that, uh, has rightly pointed out it's the unprecedented times like education is such a major topic it comes you it's um, the decisions are made with coordination uh, among policy makers academic leaders then uh, administrators and then the parents and then the students so it's a large ecosystem but at this juncture we are posed a challenge within a very short time we are having to come up with a solution by coordinating this volume of um, people and different uh, different parts of the ecosystem together so and what happens is the teacher because the teacher is the one who is facing the student kind of takes a lot of heat uh, of the issue so uh, for a teacher to be prepared with the right tools is the most important to make sure the adoption is quite successful and when i say the right tools the challenges come from both physical aspects as well as the mental aspects i know a lot of uh, conferences are going on a lot of discussions are going on around uh, the smartphone not being available smartphones not being available or the laptop laptops not being available or the internet not being as accessible in smaller towns trust me today i was speaking to a friend from another metro and he was telling me sindhu the consumption is so high that here even though i am sitting in a metro i am not able to receive enough signals to operate so it's not just about smaller towns even in a larger towns with good ecosystem uh, the because of the consumption going up uh, you know availability of net not me meeting the requirement there are certain issues so making sure internet there is good net connectivity there is good um, whether it's a laptop or a smartphone making sure that infrastructure is available is the most important piece and number 2 uh, once again uh, vidya shankar has pointed out that part also the physical part of the house uh, earlier we were all going to offices we were going to schools and there we had a different kind of physical setup we had a classroom where we could go and teach today we are in the house probably we have to make sure that every corner of the house is treated as a separate building or separate area and make sure our work timings or our study timings are scheduled out properly enough and we kind of show empathy towards uh, one another understanding towards one another and uh, adjust our system accordingly we have seen teachers who had this problem of where okay they are probably staying in a single bedroom house or a two bedroom houses uh, but fortunately enough in the apartments they kind of spoke to each other and made sure a vacant apartment um, that has been used is being used more like a working place um of the entire building so that because not just the teachers the rest of the people who are living there need and physical infrastructure where they can go sit peacefully and do these online 
calls. So that kind of empathy, that kind of community sharing is uh, very important. So it's not just about the smartphones or uh, net connectivity, even sharing of physical space uh, is very important. So that kind of physical adoption and when it comes to the mental side of it, I have seen the, some of the teachers when we told them, no, you also need to take the online class. They said, ma'am, I like it when my students are looking at me, paying attention to me, but in the online class, we don't even know if they're paying enough attention. So the thing is, we, uh, I have read Vidya Shankar put it out um, in one of his profiles saying, there are no children with attention deficit. It's only about the learning modules uh, being of the right sort for the right person. So we have to ensure that for after the first 10 minutes of the session onwards, try to keep it more interactive, maybe a Q and A session or making sure and a poll is sent out. Now all the modules have come up with uh, the polling system where you can send out a question and see how many say yes, how many say no. All these are, creative methods which a teacher needs to come up with. So earlier days, it was more about, I know the topic in depth, so I'm going to uh, you know, speak at depth and that is going to give me regards as a good teacher. Today, it's about how well we can retain the attention of the student and that is not something that can be pushed in organically. We have to adopt and move around and that is what is going to increase um, you know, their attention span. Then coming to uh, the class timings, yes, we are probably giving them three hour, I mean, or three sessions or four session, sessions in a day, but understand that the rest of the time we have, let's put it to good use. Whether you send out an assignment or whether you do a doubt clarification session or when kids come to school, they are very happy when they answer a, a question right, they get appreciation, but today they are missing that. So, and it cannot be uh, just a mechanical one. So at least if, if you cannot do it within the class because there is stipulated time, post the session, you know, sending out a small note of appreciation or a message is going, is actually keeping them quite motivated. And that is what most of the teachers um, who are being proactive are doing. And the last, but the most important thing uh, for teachers, the feeling of oneness. When we go to a school or whether um, the social teachers, probably they'll come together and share their notes. They try to see how we, how, you know, what, what extra material they are going to go through to pre prepare for the class. Today, probably the sharing kind of got a little pause. We are mostly, we were probably busy, a little too busy trying to adopt to the online system, but probably now we need to get back to the inquisitiveness, try to learn as much as you can, and also share with your colleagues. Sharing is the only way in which we can keep learning and go forward, uh, both not just the subject, part, but also about how to keep the attention of the student going and how to keep how to keep motivating the students. And that is the only way to grow and um, make sure the entire effort, uh, effort is fruitful. So if teachers can follow um, these parts or make sure the solutions are given to the right way, definitely um, those are the ones who are already making sure it's the effort is successful. And that is a way to keep keep it going as well. As for the parents, yes, I did see the question that has come from Madurai asking um, how to make parents uh, take up more responsibility, how to make students take up, uh, be more responsible. Um, putting myself in the shoes of a student, I do take online classes uh, for my fitness session. I do a 30 minutes to an hour session based on the day of the week. I make sure the only rule I set myself is when I start, I should make sure I finish the class. So some basic discipline has to be set to the student. Make sure when you start attending the class, if you were in a physical classroom, you cannot exit it uh, you know, uh, in between. So if there is a basic discipline being set, then that kind of catapults into a lot more. 
things. Uh, when it comes to the parents, this is an advice I have been informally sending out to a lot of them. Uh, There's a funny incident I have come across. So uh, we are about 350 families stay in our apartments. And as I go for a walk every day, I used to see this lady who used to happily come and tell me, thank you, Narana, for starting the online classes. Every day, my both kids are sitting and I can see them go, uh, go through the sessions on their tabs. They're with me and I can see that they are full on into it. We are very happy with it. I heard that for about 15 days. And I think on the 16th day when I met the kid, I said, I heard you're doing very well. And she told me, ma'am, I just can't wait for the school to start. Because my mom is like just watching me all the time. And I just feel doubly pressured to perform. This is too much. So understand that different stakeholders have different views. Helicopter parenting to an extent uh, I understand it comes organically when you're sitting in the same place you do tend to observe, but let's not be uh, too worried about it, too strict on the kids. Let, let's be empathetic towards them as well. They are going through a lot too. They are just, you know, kind of um, feeling the claustrophobic um, you know, pressure in a particular place. Earlier, they would just go to school and jump and come back in the evening. Today, they don't have that. They're not meeting their friends. So let's let all of us, whether it's teachers, students, parents, let's all of us kind of be empathetic, understand the situation from other person's perspective and go forward. That is the only way to, to kind of come out of this COVID situation positively and stronger. Dr. Podar? So um, we're, the question kind of got lost in here. I think we're basically focusing on how do you make the children uh, uh, self-responsive is what we're talking about mainly. I think that was the that's question. That's right, that's right. Um, this is actually generally uh, taught in schools. And uh, now that we don't have that, uh, let's start with how do we actually manufacture that in this time? Um, that, which takes us back to what communication really looks like uh, in the family and also uh, with, with the teachers. Um, none of the communication now can be, uh, can be authoritarian because obviously you do not have any control over what the child is uh, saying, thinking, or whether he turns or tunes you off. So it's very important to get the buy-in. And so we're trying to move then in that case from a you know, a debilitative to a generative mindset. Um, when we're talking about this, I think very important to get the buy-in of uh, the student um, as well as the parents to be able to understand that the body has rhythm and, you know, maybe 90 to 120 minutes uh, it takes for prime focus. I know there's a lot of study being done on this as well. And if children are trained or are taught or are explained that these cycles work well for them and if they can actually adopt the uh, psychological and your uh, somatic cycles then it's probably much better and more conducive to their um, education or their ability to educate themselves that's number one um, i think like i was saying when when it comes to you know communication um, and how do you communicate with these children? I think the communication has to be totally transparent. So you will use the I statements, like my expectation is A, B, C, D thing. And I'm hoping that uh, you can buy into that expectation. Uh, tell me how we can make this easy for you and really start those conversations online um, through Zoom or whatever access you have with them so that you can get a, a result. Because I know when I even look at my own children that after about uh, you know not even 90 they're not even stretching it to 90 minutes really but even stretching it to about 30 minutes and then breaking it up and allowing that break at that point I think it works well for them even if you look at the online ones that are actually working I'm sure Sindhura has had experience because she was saying that she does a gym class they won't really do more than 30 minutes and if it's more than 30 minutes you will then you will see a drop off because people don't have the attention span to take it further. So even your classrooms have to adjust itself to those timings so that it can make it, uh, you know, so that the limits that you set are conducive to the learner who is at home. 
that's I think a very important point because if you push more than they can chew or they or you push more than they can bite they're not going to be able to chew it anyway and it's not going to be helpful and then uh, comes in a cycle of I can't do this and you know it starts self negativity and and the fact that you're just unable to spend that quality time giving that uh, quantitative um, mental focus on something but everything that we're talking about, I mean, like we're generalizing uh, for a population that we're saying is capable of receiving this information. So I'm not talking about the outliers. We're just talking about the people who are, who are in this, uh, who are, have access and are in the program. And like you're talking about, I think, uh, I think the Shankar mentioned uh, the teachers and, and their um, enthusiasm to work with the children and they're not able to do that right now. But we're seeing that this is caused and, and we do a lot of work with uh, I'm having webinars with schools, with teachers, uh, with 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 parents, and there's a huge amount of uh, of you know I I don't want to call it depression, but it's definitely um, a heaviness, and it's going into uh, a cycle of not being able to cope with it. Not only for your for yourself as well, because there's a purpose with which people work, and that purpose, which is the life force, is is not. Um, is, is not getting enhanced. It's not, you're not feeling that purpose anymore. Just the screen blocks that purpose from taking place. Um, so so that they have to build a relationship with this new purpose. So it's almost like really talking to the teachers uh, independently as well, not only in group set, settings, but independently as well to help them reprogram that purpose to a purpose of education, which is more uh, catered to an online system. And this is not easy. And given the fact that the human, um, the social and the, the human social environment that we live in is not, co is not built uh, to uh, be compartmentalized. So when we get out of the house and a physical body and a physical form goes out, we know we compartmentalize the pain that we have, the pain and suffering or whatever uh, that we have in the home, or even if it's not that, the responsibilities that we have. And we come into this responsibility, we actually take ourselves from the area that we were in and project ourselves to a new space, leaving all that behind. Now you can't leave all that behind. It's almost like you're carrying everything with you. It's a lot of emotional burden. It's a lot of emotional, sometimes toxicity as well. And to put your best self forward, I know in grade nine, I mean, it's a personal story and I had a fight with this teacher because this teacher was shouting at me and I was like looking at this teacher wondering well, what's wrong with him? Why is he shouting at me? And I, I actually said this to him. I said, listen, like if you have had a bad time at home, take it out at home. Like why are you coming out and telling me this, right? And of course, I was sent to the principal's office just because I was not exactly the you know, prime student um, and really didn't believe in taking people's rubbish, even at that age. And I was like, you know, why are you taking it out on me? Take it out at home. Now there's no place like that. Now everything is here. We're dealing with a, a cauldron of everything being present at all times. And this is unprecedented, more than unprecedented than the COVID because we're not able to you know, focus and function in that. So we're talking about how do we actually create our relationship boundaries, not only with ourselves, but also with the people that are living around us. And then this is an extended uh, radius that we start working on. So when the ripple is, uh, when the stone drops, the ripple effect goes up, right? We're talking about ripple effect, which is secondary when it comes to profession. Primary is what's happening with you and yourselves. Then it comes into you and your family and then you and your, your, your profession and then you and the environment. So actually it's not even second, it's the third level. But we're saying that these first two levels have to be clean, polished, put into a, a, a space that is, that is conducive for our application and then moving forward. And everybody's concerned. I mean, you see, uh, we have a helpline that's running with 600 volunteers right now for mental health called Wellbeing Volunteers United. And we're getting distress calls on that. And we thought it would be more about the emotional distress calls, but it's not. We're getting calls about ration and livelihood and this and the other. That's why even in the questions that you see here, most of the questions are, what about our salary, our salary, our salary? It's, it's mainly, you know, it's, it's, it's always going to be the practical rather than the emotional and, you know, you know, it's more the practical. So when we're looking at the practical, it's very important to understand that let's talk about what that practical is, because when you look at even Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I mean, we are still, you know, kind of, sort of still asking the same questions in that order. So mental health and, you know, those kind of things and education also gets shafted. I know my husband was saying, listen, you're not paying attention to the children's education. I'm like, okay, well, you can handle it. I don't want to. It's not my forte. I don't really want to do that, right? But I don't, I don't mind 
mind them like losing a year. I don't mind them doing that. But other people don't have that mentality. They want to make sure the child is going to be focused. And this pressure, like I was saying, even like in our private conversation, the pressure is not going to bode well for the students because it's also a very different time and there are many different challenges and having everybody around. I know my kids are trying to spread themselves because they're all together, but they need to be on these Zoom calls and there's so much noise and there's, how do you actually focus? And then you have to focus and make sure that the other students aren't getting disturbed. It's not easy just for a social environment as well. And then now education, where they're actually studying on their own. Very difficult. We're assuming people have rooms. We're still assuming that there are two rooms. You know, there's not that many people who have two rooms. So it's not easy. So I mean, I think, I think uh, Vidishank will be at a better position to, to talk about how this can actually go forward. I'm just thinking that there is a lot we're not talking about and can't even handle yet. And I think we need to, you know, build those steps first before we handle this larger picture. So I'll hand it over to you, Vidishankar. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll just add over here to a point with a um, couple of educators have asked that, you know, while we were in school, we used to always teach kids uh, that they should bond with each other. And now we are teaching kids to uh, maintain social distancing. This is kind, kind of a conundrum. Uh, can you help them sort out this? Because uh, that is that is something what I mentioned also. One of the teachers asked me, so there is going to be completely two extremes of messages which we are giving children today, right? One is you never use phones, never use all your laptops, everything today. We ask them to spend a good amount of time here. Similar to that, they can't meet each other. They can't spend time with each other. That too, I'm thinking, uh, so we used to call like zero to seven is the imprinting age. Right? That's when the belief of a human being is formed. So those kids, I'm wondering what kind of belief systems they will have right now. Right? So they, they actually go through this kind of experience at a, such an young age. So it is going to be that creating their beliefs forever in their life. Right? So this will have a lifelong impact. So only one key thing is this. Always I say this, the event has happened right even this happening you and i don't have a choice it's, it's it's unbelievable no flights are flying people are not moving not even one vehicle is moving uh, petrol will or, or any crude you want to buy you will be paid money to take away the crude incredible unbelievable experience is what we are having right at this point of time this intense event and when it comes to education kids can't meet their meet their own uh, teachers right so many changes this event is happening. There, there is no, no doubts on it. So you have a choice to choose a response, right? Because always we say like event is not the outcome, right? Instead, event plus the response is what the outcome is. We have a choice at this point of time to choose the uh, response what we want. So why I am telling this? Because at this point of time, as a lot of uh, uh, see, school owners are connected, teachers are connected. I am talking from their perspective. It becomes a very, very important point of point in your life, the aspect in your life, where this is a massive change which is happening. We must have to move or take up this digital journey. So, to what extent we are going to mix the digital component in learning is is, is completely to be decided by various schools. Or certain times we may be forced. Right now we are almost doing 100% digital, right? Over a period of time, if possibly, if we can, if we can little alter it and uh, do like uh, 20, 80, and slowly we can do like 50, 50. At least it's, it's brilliant. But believe me, there is going to be a larger component of digital learning as we move forward. That is going to be the uh, future. So the students today, the teachers today must have to get up for it. And the parents always have this concern. Whatever they learn in class is the same thing possible in a digital learning. Always I tell the parents, your children are much, much smarter when it comes to digital learning. Their capability to learn online is far superior than any of the parents because they were born in the digital world. A two-year-old, three-year-old can, can open a, a phone, a smartphone in no time, right? So they are born in the digital world. 
So obviously their learning capabilities will be far, far better. But a very important question, whether this will pass, whether we'll be, will we be able to go through this situation live, right? A lot of people have this question. So this too will pass because one of the very earliest books I've read in the area of personal excellence is from Dr. Robert Schuller, right? Tough times never last, but tough people do, right? So this too will pass. It's, it's all about this. It's all about are we adapting ourselves to this change? Because when, when a motor car came in, this was the same thing, right? So today there is a big transformation which is happening. We are going through a digital journey. We need digital assistance. So all those things are going to be the process. As I said, what may possibly happen 10 years later, we are seeing it now, right? Uh, one of the questions of uh, Richard Brands and Virgin Airlines is this, why we need to have offices. So this he asked almost, I think, 10 years back, right? So when I read that question for the first time, it made me think a lot. So I thought I'll share that. So digital learning is, is here to stay. Uh, uh, so the school owners who are listening, uh, so it's, it's time we, we think how to, how to gear up for it, right? Maybe I'll, uh, I'll hear more from the other panelists too. Right. Uh, so we have quite a few other questions. I'll just pick up two of them because we are running short of time and uh, also recommend uh, panelists to give their closing comments. Uh, I think, Katul, a lot of them have asked questions on how to keep the younger students. Yes, that is exactly what I'm taking. That, you know, um, kids which are from standard five and upwards may still be able to manage uh, your uh, online classes. But how do you take care of the kids who are in the primary section or more so in the pre-primary section? You know, their attention span is very low. Uh, that's one key question, which, you know, if the panelists can address too. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, I would take the... I just, yeah. sure, sure, ma'am. Just an add-on part to this is that uh, all the audience are asking that uh, what can they do to ease the pressure from the parents? As, as Sindhu ma'am, you had said, you know, uh, parents are uh, just sitting next to the kids uh, acting like uh, helicopter uh, parents and they are they are just monitoring every session that is going on so as educators what message can they give to their kids uh, to their parents that um, can be taken care of sure. yes ma'am go ahead um, yeah i would answer the first question because i think a lot of uh, people have asked the same question how to uh, educate the younger kids as Dr. Podar has uh, rightly mentioned, uh, making sure the session is shorter is very, very important, especially with the younger kids. As we go on to the higher sessions with the professional colleges, for example, you can take an hour also at a stretch and that would be okay. But with younger ones, 30 minutes is the max attention span they have. And that is what one needs to restrict to. Number two, scheduling. Uh, because we started off with the online platform in, in just in, you know, within few days, probably while scheduling it, we would mostly think of the availability of the teacher. But while scheduling it for the younger kids, understand that they kind of prefer a routine to saying, okay, today your class is at 10, tomorrow it's at 11, then the adjustment can, will not be as quick. So making sure they kind of get the same class or at least they have the same time of having a class, if not the same English subject, maybe some other subject, but exactly at the same time every day, that kind of makes it a little more easier for them. Uh, this is for both the school owners as well as the administrators this is something for you to keep in mind. And number three, what I noticed is when you're dealing with these younger kids, starting the class on a positive note, like some of our uh, really uh, proactive teachers, they have shown the previous day's work of the kids. It could be something absolutely related to subject or it could be a drawing or something related to COVID, whatever it is, something funny, something artistic, they just show it um, in, the, in the class. They start the class with that. So they feel that sense of appreciation. They make everyone clap or they kind of do an ice breaking couple of minutes and then start with the class and try not to cover as much subject as you would do 
in a regular session because we are still at the point of adjusting or adopting to the system. Uh, but, may, but make sure the homework part, whatever you give, is also followed up as sincerely. So if we can adopt all these mechanisms, definitely uh, even our lower sections are doable, but we have to uh, do it the right way or we learn as we go further. And as for parenting, yes, I already mentioned helicopter is parenting is something that one needs to keep in mind. Um, I'm a parent of uh, one year old, although my, my um, son had joined a mother toddler program just a couple of months before the COVID came up. And I, although he is just one year old, I sometimes uh, keep thinking, oh, he should, he could have learned that his fine motor skills could have improved, cross motor skills could have improved. I, I, a lot of thoughts come into my mind as well. So I can imagine what parents of higher classes also must be thinking. But yeah, try to be more empathetic to them. If they do not, uh, you know, kind of attend, uh, kind of uh, pay less attention or be most active in the class. Just the fact that they started and ended the entire session, just be appreciative of that. Just appreciate them for all the small things. If they just finish the homework, appreciate it. Let, let's be um, nourishing. Let's just appreciate them for small things so that they have the motivation to take the larger challenges. Dr. Pudar? Um, I think uh, well, I have a grade two kid, so she's actually, since I'm not so helpful, <laughs> and I'm not a helicopter parent, I believe in self-regulation. Uh, it's one of the first things I put into place. Self-regulate for my happiness and your happiness too. So that was like extremely important for me. And uh, so she comes with me, like if I, uh, we're in a, a village right now, um, and uh, the, the, the lockdown isn't as bad, so she can come with me to my parents' house. Um, so when I take her to my parents' house, my first thing is, you can come, but you have to finish all your work. And luckily in school, uh, what they've done is they have uh, courses uh, and classes that these children have to take, but they can take it at the time that they need to, except for the time that they have to talk to the teacher. And not all the classes need them to be interacting with the teacher. A lot of it is self-learning. So for example, if it's reading time, they have the books online and they can read it. If it's math, they have like a mathematics or for, for their age group and they go through the math and it's de delivered. And you know, on power school, we can see that it's all done and it's all delivered. So luckily the school provides for me what I need because I can just check, okay, done, done, not done. Okay, not done. Okay, I'll call her and say, why is this not done? Please complete this. Because if you can't complete this, you can't go for a swim, no? There's like a very easy like <laughs> repercussion of like, if you're not able to do this, you can't do that. So you decide which time you want to spend on what. And it's not said in a very, it's not said in a threatening manner. It's just a said in a practical manner that there are these things, which I find actually quite good because you're actually, you're teaching the child to be responsible uh, for themselves. Now, when you're doing helicopter parenting, I have a big problem with helicopter parenting because there are a huge amount of, uh, psychological damages. I mean, we have 40 year olds who come for therapy who have no idea how to make decisions because they've just never been given the skill. I mean, so it's, I don't want to even get into that because it's not a seven hour for like, uh, you know, what this kind of development does and how it damages the individual. So I won't go there, but I would like everybody to refrain from doing that. If you have a little bit of intelligence, make sure that you give that intelligence and, and you know, like, like since you were quoting like a few things from different books, I think that one of the greatest quotes that I like is, you know, uh, teach a man how to fish rather than give him, giving him a fish, you know, like, so we don't want to give the child, yeah, something uh, by telling them how to do it and when to do it and why to do it, but we want to give them the mechanism to be able to grow that skill internally. And you'll see this even at the corporate workplace. I mean, you know, with, with doing training and development and you see these older people, I know my kid has better chances of, 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 uh, of taking a subject, researching that subject, even, even in grade two and coming up with some kind of uh, solutions for what they have to versus somebody who's in a corporate and does, has no idea how to do this research. And like Vidya Shankar said also that, you know, the kids are more adept at, uh, at digital technology. They are, but you're not. So your skill of being a parent and saying, do A, B, C, D thing and do it like this and do it like that is not going to help because even though, and this is a study. So I, I know that it was mentioned, but let me just bring it into the scientific sort of terminology. There's a study done on the fact that children now can have four screens open and still be focusing um, as much as, as we can on one screen. So it's, and it's actually this multitasking works better for them because they're able to absorb information from everywhere and put it into a standard uh, for, for their own ability to give. So don't judge 
don't judge any of them by the work that they're that you think they're doing by what you see but really try to fit you know try to see whether the the impact of what they've done has had the rewards so you're not you're not judging the steps and they're sitting and how much time they're sitting and whether they're focusing and all that you're just judging has it been given what has been the outcome of that and when you judge that and when you kind of talk to the teachers to see whether your expected outcomes are the same as their as the outcomes that they've given and the expectations have been met i think that's where you need to pay attention not on the helicopter parenting not on the you will sit at this time to this time not i wake up at like eight o'clock because you have to be on that zoom call and no because the schools don't even need to do that now because you can get on a call maybe in the afternoon and make sure that the call is in the afternoon so that the children have already done whatever they needed to do and i think kids my daughter actually the one who is seven has a, a better she does it better than my older ones because my older ones know how to zoom into like fortnite my younger one is just like you know playing her like doing her work which is now you know in a in a playway method and she's able to do that and whatever she has to create she creates offline and she posts it on there's something called uh, i think seesaw which we use so she you know sends it on seesaw and everybody has access to it so they get their satisfaction and gratification is the fact that yes i've given this on time and everybody's uh, been there and everybody's seen our work and that's the gratification that we're talking about the pat on the back there's still ways to do that and i think that the younger age group is actually um we can train them better we catch them young train them better and they're self training and they're learning it's like it's like ai for humans right they're actually doing this on the go and i think it's very fascinating um like i said the older kids have a little bit of a struggle i think the younger ones are easier to handle right ma'am thank you this is this these examples are very helpful and i think some of your examples will be used by uh the teachers and educators uh to their parents uh and this is very important uh vidya shankar yeah what yeah. are your thoughts uh if 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 as especially around you know uh, if you could throw some light on couple of life skills that uh the educators can tell to the parents that they should be doing with the kids to lighten up the moment yeah i mean uh, predominantly uh, as i said one of the biggest challenge which uh, see as parents uh, i mean almost every parent is is going through today is uh, it's too much time with children right it's lot of time whatever you are you are craving for has been granted right you thought you want to spend some time at home you want to spend some time with children it's it's now a uh, lot of time right in in one of my books i i i used to write, i i have written a chapter which is actually little eyes always watches you right children always learn from what we do rather than what we say right we may say 10 things but what you do is what stays in their mind so and uh, children now are spending almost the entire time with you right always be aware I say when you are talking on phone you have been watched right so it is not an office where you must have to say what is the reality what is the truth so children learn from you so for for parents it is it is definitely a, a big challenge right so ensuring how my children are productively engaged during this time and um, apart from it one thing what we can possibly must have to impart at this point of time is uh, is thankfulness right because if you check for us to stay safe these kids have to realize that almost uh, a 10 percentage of mankind is struggling it out on the field right i mean though it is it is it is, it is a different kind of challenge for the educators today when we are going to open up the school whether our school is safe to receive the children right all those things are the biggest challenge for the school owners the teachers or i mean even the some of the exams are have to be completed uh, the question papers are to be i mean the answer sheets have to be corrected so it's it's a long path ahead uh, so we are we don't have much of clarity on how things are going to pan out but still if you check we at least have majority of us have the choice to be at home to think right 
and 10% of mankind is out on the field predominantly i'm i'm talking about uh, the medical profession people who are the police force the sanitation force they are on the field fighting it out to ensure we are safe so i will say the parents uh, you must have to ensure or even the educators it's a time to think because the toughest job of human being is thinking right we 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 thought we don't have time for it right we were, we were consistently we are we are continuously doing something we we, we are just looking for a break right we are looking for that one sunday or or a weekend right now you have all the time for yourself so do the task which you never had the time which is thinking so if you need to teach your children one of the very powerful tool it is about thinking set of things about their own life what i want to do how life can be different so all those set of things or that's that's something which which i would like to say at this point of time uh, teach them how to think right so that that's that be the biggest gift what i can possibly give it to you actually thank you vidya uh, can we just do a last round of uh, closing comments uh, from our panelists because we have already uh, shot over our scheduled time um yeah we will uh, probably uh, dr narayana please go ahead yeah try to keep it as short as possible i think um, just to add to what vidya shankar said yes kids are observing you and kids imitate you or kids imitate us so it's uh, probably like helicopter parenting there is like helicopter studenting or so so <laughs> um yeah so uh, yes uh, these are unprecedented times this is pretty much like a world war um, and it's not one state or one country that is going through it entire world is going through it and it's not just one sector which is going through it all the sectors are going through it so whether it's teachers um parents students whoever is on the group i do see some worried questions going on in the q and a do understand that everyone is going through it and uh, the touch wood at least unlike in the past times the internet has is keeping the world together so whatever good idea has come up in uh, a certain area are being passed down to all of us china in fact is trying to uh, kind of partially open up the lockdown uh, since 6th their schools have restarted not on full scale but then partially and we are trying to learn uh, from them everyone is trying to learn so i am pretty sure we'll come out of this very strong uh, let's just stay positive let's stay healthy and as i stated earlier let's just stay inquisitive and sharing sharing the challenges so that we can find solutions for you solutions for each other and the good things that happen in life so that we can all share the happiness right stay, take care thank you sundara ma'am dr poda so um i think just to end because we want to move beyond uh we are like we want to move into a generative state i think of course um as you know and as you said people the little people are watching you in a big way um uh, be authentic be authentic which doesn't mean be perfect because human beings are not perfect and that also encourages a, a huge amount of a break between who they are and who they need to be so be authentic number 1 um as authentic as you can be uh we know and because we run uh we mental health helplines and stuff we know that the abuse towards children has gone up and you become you know violent as well in the homes um and i think it's it's about time that we also focus on 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 stating that because even when us teachers are interacting with with students i think you need to highlight that there is uh there is help uh for them to be able to deal with the situation by making sure their communication is assertive enough to uh help them uh safeguard themselves because every human being has a right to safety and i think it's very important that they know this and maybe you know if you have the outreach and you're working with so many children please do ensure that they are safe in their own homes um because this helicopter parenting also leads to violence uh which is i don't want to get into that space but you know you got to make sure that uh it's it's relevant and it's heard you when the student makes sure that that they're following uh, certain guidelines and principles i think it works out well for themselves so even having that conversation with the family and uh, making sure the family kind of understands that you have set up your schedule and set up your schedule which is conducive to you and to your cycle of of wake sleep attention you set up your schedule start to follow those that schedule make sure you actually factor in 
your um, breaks. So factor in your breaks in your day. And this is from like, you know, K to 12 to higher education. Factor in your breaks. Um, there's a lot of study done on the Pomodoro chunks, like really breaking it down into those, uh, those chunks of time that you are the most effective and uh, focusing your hardest work on those times that you're most effective. So really, really fine tune because you have the time to actually think about how you've been operating. Keep notes like, okay, uh, you know, uh, great attention span, lost attention span, focus on something else. Keep it for like a week this kind of like schedule for yourself and then see what works well for you, especially if you, your students are, you know, older, like grade eight, maybe grade six onwards, they have the capability to do that. Focus on that. Make sure that they build their schedule and make sure, uh, you know, help them navigate this schedule by um, ensuring that, you know, they've, they've put uh, measures in this where they support themselves. So they learn to avoid distractions. They learn to follow their own schedule because it's a schedule that's been given by them to themselves. Um, they avoid uh, all kinds of, uh, they, they make sure that they have those breaks, whether it's water break, whether it's walking breaks, whether it's uh, breathing breaks, whatever those breaks are, it's important that they take this. Well-being is the most important thing for children to do well in school. So, and their well-being needs to be the primary function of a parent. I mean, well-being number one, education number two, because without well-being, education is not happening. And this is a time where we've had so many calls with students who have, who have called us in to talk about suicidal ideation and we've had to escalate those problems to um to the psych to the psychiatrists to make sure that they handle it suicidal ideation child abuse has gone up make sure that you are talking about these things because it's not only about the education curriculum it is about the social emotional curriculum that it gets built in all their ability to communicate about this and you are their safest they're safest people right now because A, you are not hitting them, you're not, you're far away, you're still encouraging them, you have the, the you know, their interest, uh, you know, their interest in your hearts. And, and I think it's time to, to balance, integrate and strengthen that relationship. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. This is insightful. That very important that you are safest because you cannot punish the, the kids right now. It's, it's, it, the kids will be very happy. Vidya Shankar, your uh, final closing comments. Yeah, because I'll, I'll just keep it uh, very short. Uh, uh, say, I would like to close with, if, if you believe in God, uh, so it's a short prayer, uh, right? God, uh, give me the serenity to accept things which uh, I can't change, right? Because right now we are almost in that situation. We can't change certain things, right? And we have to accept as it is. Give me the power and courage to change those things which I can change, right? So right now, what you can possibly change, think of it, right? Be it your profession, be it your, your school, or be it your teaching methodology. Because I strongly believe that the teaching methodology decides how much a child can possibly learn, right? And apart from it, give me the wisdom to differentiate between things which I can change and things which I cannot change. Unfortunately, right now we are in a situation where most of the things cannot be changed. Right? We are little in a, a strict framework, so we need to uh, do whatever is possible within that small framework. So there is a challenge. Uh, so schools are going through a challenge. Uh, say educators are going through definitely a challenge because um, there are times parents assume the amount of work online is lesser. But if you talk to a teacher, you know, it, it is more difficult uh, to do it online for them because it's, it's completely new. A teacher is extremely good and trained to walk into a class and talk to children, but getting online and getting connected, there are kids who may lose interest. So all those challenges which, which uh, teachers face. Uh, so this is a time where our framework is so limited. So most of the things cannot be changed. So still, let us believe in that faith so this too will pass and that will give that time for us to go through this digital journey and uh, education transformation is happening. It's, it's something what we are going through right now. Uh, so we will gear up for it. Uh, that's, that's the way uh, things uh, will be better for us, right? So I also take this opportunity at this point of time to thank uh, Dr. Sindhura ma'am uh, for her wonderful insights of uh, how, how she has handled various challenges. Uh, Dr. Pudar, um, thanks ma'am. Uh, it, it was very insightful, right? Very practical uh, examples you have given. Thanks a lot. And um, Atul, thanks a lot. Uh, 
for all the work. I mean, uh, Atul has put in a lot of efforts to make this happen right from the beginning. He has given me a lot of inputs also. So how the whole thing uh, should be structured and uh, thanks Atul. Uh, so it was, it was great having all of you uh, in this panel. Thank you. Thank you all the panelists for uh, taking time out and coming. Uh, one last point that I would just tell to the educators is that uh, conduct, uh, you know, some parties, online parties for your kids, and then they will become your friends. And then, you know, you will find it more uh, simpler to interact with them uh, rather than getting stressed. Uh, thank you very much. We have another session coming up tomorrow, which is with the parents and another set of panelists. Uh, this is more on stress management for the parents and to reduce these helicopter parenting situations. Um, so I would recommend that all educators, they recommend their parents to uh, log in tomorrow uh, and attend the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, the panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Good day. Thank you. Thank you.